Hi everyone, welcome back. This is week seven of my social isolation get ready with me's. This week I asked if you wanted to see me use the ColourPop Chasing Rainbows palette or the Violet Boss Sugar Crystals palette and it was really close. This went actually back and forth so many times throughout the day that this was posted on Instagram stories. In the end, Violet Boss, the Sugar Crystals palette did win by 55%, but the ColourPop one was so close at 45 that I think I'll just use that one next week because I really like that palette. Well, I like both of them and it'd be fun to use both of them. However, today we're using the Sugar Crystals palette. So I have had a little bit of an idea of what I want to do with this palette that I haven't even shown you yet. How ridiculous. Here's Sugar Crystals. Oh, it's such a lovely palette. So the inside is a rainbow and what's so great about this is that you get an entire matte row of shades and then you've got a whole shimmery row of like I would say light to medium duochrome shades and then this whole bottom row is like an ivory cast with a shift of color. It is so freaking pretty and if you want an easy look out of this whole thing but you don't really know how to mix colors together just stick with the monochrome columns and each of those is like the perfect eyeshadow look. You just put one of these on the inner corner of the eye, that on the lid, and then that in the crease, and you're set. As per usual, everything that I'm using today will be listed in the description box down below in case you're curious about a step that I'm not mentioning, such as eye primer. <laughs> so the look that I'm kind of envisioning with this is something that I don't normally do, which means I don't know how it's going to go. I plan to do orange on the top of my lid and then blue on the bottom, and then I want to use this Suva Beauty, uh, what are they called, hydro liners uh, to make the wing to sort of like cut through the orange and tie it into the blue. I can kind of visualize it in my head, but sometimes it doesn't always come out as intended. So we're definitely going to find out if this is a look that's going to work on me today. Whenever I'm filming these videos, I actually have to take notes as to what happened to me during the week because I feel like so much of these weeks blur together that if I get to the end of the week and I haven't written anything down, I have nothing to talk about on camera because over time, I mean, I'm running out of things to say just because nothing is that interesting. So I've got my list here. Uh, where am I gonna start with? So I'm ordering takeout once every two weeks right now. It's kind of like my fun little go-to thing to do. I was a little bit leery about ordering takeout at first because I thought maybe like cross-contamination with workers who may have COVID-19, but I, heard or read somewhere that it was perfectly safe so I started doing that. It's like my one highlight every two weeks is to order something out for takeout and uh, I am ordering from Fresh Restaurants which is a Toronto based one I think and it's predominantly vegetarian and vegan food so my husband is like not into that kind of food whatsoever so I will order from there and then he'll order like pizza pizza. <laughs> So we each get our things that we like to eat on that weekend day. And I'm only doing it every two weeks just because I don't want to be excessive about it. Um, because I mean, you know, I have a job right now and I should for the foreseeable future, but you never know what's going to happen right now. Okay, starting off with lid colors, I'm going to take Pear Berry on a fluffy brush. This is Real Techniques and it's a deluxe crease brush. And that's exactly where we're going to be putting this, directly in my crease. Oh, I just, I love this palette. Just laying down that color just makes me happy. So takeout has been a fun little thing every two weeks. Um, I also every two weeks restock on alcohol uh, because, you know, I'm trying to limit how much I'm actually going out. So we only grocery shop, I think every two to two and a half weeks. And it's a big haul every time we do that. But like 300 to $400 every time. Um, then I'll do like my wine shop on the Thursday where I get paid. <laughs> it's like payday, it's like wine day for Shell. <laughs> and I, we just buy enough to stock up for two weeks until we go to the grocery store or the liquor store again. Okay, sticking with the oranges, I'm going to take orange creme on a flat shader brush. This is a MAC 239. And I'm just going to put that all over the lid. Oh, what a color. Oh, it's not catching the duochrome as well in the um, viewfinder. That's unfortunate. It's like an it's like a creamsicle kind of color. It's got like this orange uh, boss bottom base kind of color to it, with like a gold reflect. It is stunning. That's funny. In the viewfinder, it shows up so much more gold than it does in person. I hate that a camera can never really capture what your eye sees, 
and some of that may be down to my lack of skill with the camera um, but it's always a little bit sad that eyeshadows just never translate as well on the um on camera as they do on the eye but yeah back to that fresh restaurant by the way if you are in toronto or you don't know about it or you're in town or whatever please go there the food go there as if anybody's going anywhere right now when they are open for business again or if you want to order from them please do so right now um but i love their their bowls i always order the powerhouse because it's got like grilled tofu in it and just the flavors are so delightful i never get it on rice because i hate rice rice is so boring to me it is such a filler kind of content in a meal i can't stand it get it on soba noodles it costs like an extra dollar for it but it is so so worth it and soba noodles are so much more interesting than rice i i know people love rice but i do not get it i think it's so dull and i'm not even talking like different types of rice with flavor i mean the only kind of rice that i've ever truly enjoyed is some sort of fried rice every other kind is just so dull to me Okay, I think for once I'm going to finish up the eyes before I do the rest of the face because I, I really want to see the eyes come together. So what I'm going to do for the lower lash line is take this color over here called Sweet and Sour on a pencil brush. This is a MAC 219, I believe is the number. And I'm going to layer that pretty much along the whole thing. That actually came out a lot more teal than I was expecting. Um, so I'm gonna take Blue Raz on the same pencil brush, and I really want more of that kind of blue to show up than what I've got going on. So I'm just gonna try layering this on the outer corner and then really dragging it through uh, Sweet and Sour to see what we can do to amp up the blueness. And I'm gonna pull this up a little bit here because I'm gonna be doing a wing with a blue liner and I kinda of want it to like meld a little bit together. As I'll, almost as if this shadow is looking like a haze that comes off the liner. Okay, I think it's coming together, but I'm not quite sure yet because this just looks a little bit nutty. Uh, I'm, I am gonna blend out the orange though with my um, oh so handy Wet n Wild Brulee Single. Can't get enough of this thing. It's just the perfect brow bone highlight shade for me. And I'm just gonna blur out those edges a little bit. I suppose if you're better at blending than I am, you never have to do this, but this is kind of a necessary step for me. Okay, to blend together the sort of turquoisey color with the orange up here, I think I'm gonna use a yellow. So I'm gonna take a small brush and I'm gonna go in with a buttercream down here and just pop that on the inner corner of the eye. Oh yeah, that works. And I just drag it down a little bit around the corner so that it blends into the blue. Okay, now for the part that I hope ties everything together. I'm gonna to be taking the Suva Beauty Hydra Liner in the shade Tracksuit. And this is a deep blue, royal blue, I guess you could say. And I'm going to create a wing that is hopefully going to, I hope I put them in the right spots here, be in between where the shadows hit. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with these hydro liners, they're basically cake liners. So you need to take a little bit of water, which I have in the shot glass, and mix it with the product. I just put a little bit on a brush. I'm using a very thin brush for this. And I just put it directly on like the cake pan and just sort of like rub it together a little bit so that you get a kind of very thin consistency. It can't be too thick, so this stuff will never go on your eyes. Um, but it is a little bit of like figuring out how much you want to add in. So let's hope this works. I know there's a lot of people that draw their wings out and just flick it. I always draw mine in because I feel like I've got better control at creating like a precise point. Okay, so that's the winged liner done. Uh, I think it's gonna look a little bit better with some mascara and lashes. This uh, is not looking exactly like what I'd planned. Maybe a black liner would work better. Anyway, let's add some mascara and lashes and I will be right back. Okay, I think that did tie it together a little bit more. So what I did was I applied a little bit of liner. This one is by NYX. It's their Pro, Off Tropic Pro Liner in Pool Boy. I put that on my lower waterline. I put the Benefit um, Bad Gal Bang Mascara on both my top and bottom lashes. I've been using this for a while. I do really enjoy it, but it's going kind of crusty, so I think I need to throw it out. And then for lashes, I put on these new ones I've never tried by Socialize. These are the Peekaboo Lashes. And they're really 
hmm, how do I describe them? Okay, they're half lashes. They're really flimsy, which is good for what I wanted. Um, so they add a little bit of volume to the outside of your eyes, because these are, like if I do that, you can see that they're quite, there we go. <laughs> you can see that they're quite long, but they don't look like too much. Like they're not heavy. And I like the fact that they are kind of wispy and they're very easy to put on because they're half lashes. So that's what I've got going on on the eyes. Now I'm gonna zoom you out and we'll finish up the rest of the face. Okay, so for face, I'm gonna start with my Ulla Henriksen Banana Bright Face Primer. Just one pump of that is generally enough. Uh, well, maybe two pumps, I didn't get much out of that one. There we go. And now I did two pumps and I think I've got too much. Whoop. Okay, so for face, I want something kind of glowy, which is why I started with this primer, because there's a little bit of a, there's a glowy hue to it, which I really like. But for foundation, I'm gonna be using the Revlon Candid Foundation. This is in the shade 130, which is ivory. And I'm gonna do something I never do, and I'm gonna mix it with this highlighter. I hope this turns out well. I'm not gonna be adding that much because I'm a little bit scared, but I do want this to be a little bit more dewy. So this is the Kiko Milano Sparkling Holiday Liquid Highlighter. My brother, of all people, actually bought this for me. I don't think it was this year. It must've been the year before. I was so shocked that he picked me up makeup from a brand that I can't really get that well in Canada. Uh, he lives in the Netherlands, so he has more easy access to European brands. And he brought a whole bunch of Kiko home stuff one year for the holidays. And I was like, what the heck? Uh, okay, that might have been too much. So I just put what I thought was a little bit on the back of my hand. We're gonna give it a shot. And then I'm gonna put some foundation on the back of my hand and see how that goes. There's a hair on there, great. Two pumps, two and a half, let's try that. Uh, and just gonna kind of mash it together with my beauty blender and then go straight on. Is the skin tone matching? Yes, thank heavens. So one of the awesome things that has happened in Canada in the last few days is that the government is banning assault guns. Either assault rifles or assault guns. I can't, I don't know gun technology or terminology very well because I'm not a gun owner. Um, but we had uh, a shooting. Uh, I don't even know how to describe these things. It was a massacre that happened in Nova Scotia about a week and a half to two weeks ago. Some guy just went on a freaking rampage and killed, I think it's over 20 people. And I hate gun violence. I think it's disgusting that people can even buy guns <laughs> if you're not a hunter and you're not hunting for your prey in order to put dinner on the table. I think it's ridiculous that people own guns. Um, so the Canadian government has banned assault rifles. And I'm so happy to hear it. I, I, I don't know all the details about it because I only read the headline and the article yesterday, but I believe people who already own these types of guns have to turn them in by 2021. Um, and I, I just think it's phenomenal. I'm just really happy to be living in a country that takes stuff so seriously that they just go ahead and abolish it. Like New Zealand, I think it was, had, New Zealand's like impressive for a lot of reasons, first of all. But New Zealand had, I believe, it was like a massacre, I don't know how many years ago, and after that one, they were like, no, we're done. We have banned assault guns, maybe just guns in general. That was one instance that really stood out. And then New Zealand also went into lockdown faster than anybody else in the world did, I believe, and they have actually abolished coronavirus already, I believe. So anyway, New Zealand's pretty friggin' cool. But the article that I read um, about the Canadian government banning these types of guns, the quote just really hit me and they were like, um, hunters don't need AR-15s to go out and shoot deer. Like these guns are created in order to kill the most amount of people in the quickest amount of time and people don't need those. There is no reason that any civilian should own any kind of gun technology like that. If you are a hunter, you can use, I guess, I don't even know what these things are, like single shot rifles? <laughs> I have no idea but you don't need something that's going to spray bullets everywhere. There is no sense in that whatsoever. And I know the culture in the US is very different than it is here in Canada, um, because here in Canada, like, I don't know a single person that owns a gun. I'm not kidding. <laughs> when I say that to Americans, they're always kind of like shocked. I don't know anybody here 
that owns a gun. And it's very disconcerting to go to the US and realize that some people are just carrying them on their person. I remember being on a running forum and some woman had posted this question to the people on the forum and was like, ladies, what do you carry for self-protection at night? I carry my X gun by X brand. And I was just like, are you, are you serious right now? Like, this is a real thing? Like, where you're concealing your gun while you're out for your run? I couldn't believe it. I was in total shock. And that was one of those moments where I was like, wow, areas of the US are very different than Canada. I run all the time, even at nighttime, and I have never felt unsafe to the point where I would need to carry a gun with me. It just blew me away that somebody would be asking that. And by the way, there's all kinds of comments from other people being like, yeah, just wear this kind of holster or wear this kind of pocket thing. And I was like, this is, this is weird. This is so weird to me. Anyway, I'm very happy to be part of a country that has banned these things. Um, and I know the argument is always going to be, yeah, well, criminals will find a way to get their hands on it anyway. Well, you know what? If you limit the supply and availability of all of these kinds of things, stuff goes down regardless. So yes, criminals will find a way. They always do. But if you're bringing less anything into a country in order to serve its population who can't buy it anymore, um, there's going to be less access to it overall. I'm saying all this and I'm really starting to wonder how many people are going to like try to school me on this kind of stuff. I don't really care. I'm just really happy to be part of a country who just saw a massacre like that and was like, no, we're not doing this. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I'm going to use the Too Faced Sweetie Pie Bronzer. I wanted something that's got a little bit more of an orange peachier tint to it to sort of match my eyeshadow. I've made such a dent in this thing. You can't tell, you cannot tell. There's like a dip in it. I'm wanting to hit pan so badly because I just love hitting pan and bronzer in particular. I don't know, it's one of those things that I really enjoy. But today I don't think it's gonna be that day. Also this week, I managed to get in four workouts, which is very exciting. Um, I know people don't love discussing weight in a time like this, because you should just be making yourself feel as comfortable as you can, given all the anxiety happening around us. Um, but my pants are starting to get tight, and that gives me more anxiety than staying home. Um, it's just starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable, just because I'm not moving around as much as I was. That's all it is. Um, but it's, it's a little bit frustrating, and I'm starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable. But um, last week I got in four workouts. I did two Jillian Michaels DVDs on different days and I ran twice. This morning I also went for a run so I'm feeling pretty good and I'm hoping to just sort of like get a little bit back on track because I feel like we've all just gone a little bit haywire with this. Like if it's snacking or booze or just not being as physically active as we were before, I've fallen off the rails. I can only assume that other people feel the same way. So I'm just trying to get back to some sort of sense of normalcy. Um, and which for me just really means being a little bit more conscious about what I'm eating and how much exercise I'm doing and looking forward to like making it be a regular thing again, because I am generally used to working out about five to six times a week. So for a few weeks I was doing like nothing cause I was ill, but getting back into the routine of it is always so difficult. Okay, for blush, I'm gonna use this beautiful color. There's such a story behind this one too. So this is a Tarte blush. Uh, it's missing a mirror in the shade Tipsy. And I had talked about the fact that I never purchased this blush when it was available. And I so regret not purchasing it because it eventually became discontinued. So somebody, one of my subscribers saw me mention this in one of my videos and then mailed it to me. I sent them a card back. I hope they received it. I'm so sorry. I don't remember your name right now, but they didn't even leave me like, I don't think there was anything in the package. So I couldn't like find them on Instagram or find them on Twitter to like um, also like thank them uh, effusively outside of just the little note that I sent them in the mail. But I am so happy to have tipsy blush. Oh, I wanted this and just never picked it up. Okay. So I'm using a MAC 130 brush because I feel like that works the best for these. I just prefer duo fiber. And this is pretty bold. So I'm gonna try to apply it lightly because I don't want it to sort of overtake my eyeshadow. This is such a stunning color though. <laughs> oh, Makes me regret not owning it for all of those years. 
And lastly, for highlighter, I'm using this one by Becca. This is their Dreamsicle highlighter. It came out a while ago. It was limited edition, but I thought the orange would just sort of work with all of this. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay, it's coming together. I'm liking this a little bit more. It's still not really what I visualized, but I'm enjoying it. Okay, I'm going to add some brows and then I will come back and we'll do the lips and finish up the video. There's brows on if you are curious about what I'm using. Uh, it's the same three products and I really don't see this changing anytime soon. I'm using the It Cosmetics Brow Power. I put that on the bottom line. And then I use the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil to fill in the top section. Sometimes I'm using, or more often than not, I'm using the NYX Micro Brow, but I just happen to have the Benefit one on hand recently. And then the one I'm really loving lately is the Benefit Gimme Brow. I've just been putting that in to fill in uh, and make my brow hairs look plumper because I just don't have much to begin with. So these three items are fantastic. It's a little bit of a process putting them all on together, but I think it looks really good. Okay, so for lips, I brought out two products because I'm not really sure how this is going to work out. I want to start with the Too Faced um, Sweet Peach Lip Gloss. This is in the shade Peach Tease. And if it's a little bit too orangey pink, I'm going to add this um, White Beauty French Press Lip Gloss in the shade Salted Caramel. I think it works, but it is a little bit too peachy orange, <laughs> like I was initially thinking, so I'm going to actually throw on some of that bite gloss. And that's a little bit too brown, but between the two it might mix well. Yeah, that's a bit better. It's a better tone. Okay, so that is it for the look. It, <laughs> you know, I like it, but it's not what I visualized. It's not far off, but I just guess I thought the colors were going to be a little bit more brighter maybe, maybe a little bit more neon. I think it's okay though, a little bit different. Oh, blend in the highlighter. It's funny though, when I look at like this kind of palette, I always think of monochrome eyeshadow looks, not something like what I'm wearing. Generally when I'm wearing this, I am pretty much just sticking to like, as I mentioned before, like the purple column or the blue column or the mint column. Oh, I've done that before and that's a gorgeous look. Anyway, so that's going to be it for this video. This is the end of week seven for my social isolation. I was on a bank conference call this morning. I work for a bank. And they were saying that our return to the office is going to be very conservative and they probably won't be doing it for quite some time. I know some provinces in Canada are starting to open up stuff and I, I think that's shocking. I can't believe some places are saying, yeah, it's okay to start opening up areas. And I'm just like, we are not through this yet. Not even close. We started to flatten our curve, but we're not like coming down on the other side of it yet. So my return to work will be very slow. It probably won't be for many more months. I'm honestly, I was thinking that 2020 was just like a lost year at this point. People are starting to say like September, but I think that that's ambitious. So I mean, I'm not a scientist. I don't really know what's going on. I don't read that many news articles about it because I do not want to depress myself too much. But I think September is fairly ambitious. Anyway, we will see. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the look. A little bit different for me. Uh, and next week I will be using the ColourPop Chasing Rainbows just because that one was such a close uh, second place to this one. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you're doing well and I will see you next time. Bye.